Is it on? Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the most high God. All honor goes to the father through the son whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, the saints watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. All right. That ain't make no sense to darn ass you. That don't make no darn sense. You know what I'm saying? What we talked about last week? Uh -oh. right. Were you even here last week, man? Mel wasn't here last week. Mel wasn't here last week. Tej wasn't here last week. This dude Zahar is from last week. And Zahar might as well not be here last week. Zahar ain't never here. Yeah, you know I mean, the so last week uh, we talked about uh, two kings, all right? Two kings. One of the kings' name was King Ahab. The other king was King Jehoshaphat. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it up on the screen real quick. Let me make sure my screen gonna come out the way I expect it to. Hello, there we go. All righty, so we got it up on the screen. We talked about King um, Ahab right here, and then King Jehoshaphat down here, all right? So when we talked about these kings, we learned that King Jehoshaphat kind of liked Ahab, right? Ahab had a little bit of a past. He had a little bit of a reputation, and we're gonna talk. We're gonna learn a bit, a little bit about his his past and reputation this week. We kind of did it out of order, right? We learned about the end of Ahab's life first, but we're gonna we're gonna kind of rewind and learn about the beginning of his life or the beginning of his reign. But he had a reputation. So Jehoshaphat, who served God, like this king who did not serve God, who actually served other gods. Right. But it was like a friend of his. You know what I'm saying? He saw, he saw him as a friend. So he would talk to him and he went to go visit him. But Ahab asked him, hey, do you want to go with me up here? Where it was Raymond Gilead? Yeah. I think it was Raymond Gilead. He said, you want to go up here and fight with me up at this war? I'm going to take Raymond Gilead. And Joseph was like, yeah, I mean, your people like my people. We all the same. It's pretty much he's like, I'm with you. But he was like, just do me one favor before we go. Why don't you talk to a prophet? See what they got to say. And so Ahab called a bunch of prophets around and all of them said the same thing. Going up, you're going to take it. God gave it into your hands. But then Jehoshaphat wasn't quite sold on all the prophets. He was like, mm, do, is, there, is there a prophet of Yahuwah? You know what I'm saying? Do you got a prophet of Yahuwah? Who knows who these other prophets are talking about? So then um, Ahab was like, yeah, there is one. But he never say nothing good. He never got good news from him. He always being negative is pretty much what he is saying, right? So they went and they pulled him out of jail because the prophet was in jail. They pulled him out of jail and they tried to warn him. They was like, look, man, King Ahab is calling you up. Why don't you just say the right thing? You know what I'm saying? Why don't you just do what you're supposed to do? Stop being mean. Just say the right thing is pretty much what they're saying to him. So uh, his name is Micaiah, right? And he came out and as a prophet, you know what I'm saying? They asked him to speak. And at first he was like, yep, you good. Go on up, take it. You're going to take Raymond Gilead. But they knew he was being sarcastic. They knew he was being facetious. So they looked at him. And I mean, Ahab looked at me. He was like, man, I right, jury, you. Just tell me the truth. Tell me what you want to say. Go ahead. And after that, he was like, man, listen, I saw all the Israel scattered like sheep without a shepherd. In other words, a bunch of sheep that's, that's ready to follow a leader. But everybody scattered. Nobody got a leader. Right. And then he said, then he gave another vision. He is like, man, listen, y'all, y'all is all up in the, you know what I'm saying? All up in the host of heaven. And it's a whole bunch of spirits around. Him. And y'all calls out and he says, who's going to entice? You know what I'm saying? Who's going to get uh, Ahab to go up into Ramoth Gilead and get himself killed, essentially? 
right? And um, after that, you know what I'm saying, spirits just came and they kind of they kind of start trying to talk about how they would do it, how they could get it done, right? All the different spirits. But then with one spirit said, man, I'm going to become a lying spirit and I'm going to cause all his prophets to tell a lie that'll trick him to go up there and get himself killed. So we learned a little bit about how God works, how God uses Satan to kind of set people up, right? To kind of put people in a position to make a decision that works against their own interests, right? By lying to us and by, coming, by becoming lying spirits is a good, 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 good listen. First of all, let me tell y'all something. Just because y'all don't show up here, right? Y'all should be watching this stuff either on YouTube, Facebook, wherever y'all at. You know what I'm saying? Y'all should be watching this stuff because a lot of times this stuff is the stuff we talked about last week is the stuff y'all under need to understand for y'all everyday life. Right. You have to you have to know that it's things happening around us that we can't see. Right. We just can't see it. All we do is have feelings. You know, how people talk to you about like emotions or. You know what I'm saying? Like you just in a bad mood or, you know what I'm saying? You might even get real technical and get somebody who really know what they're talking about. I'm like, oh man, that's just your endorphins and your, uh, what's the other one's called? Yeah, whatever them things is, you know what I'm saying? But all that stuff is, is, is what scientists, scientists can only see the physical, right? So when the scientists start to measure stuff, they just looking at your body reacting, Right. And they see your body reacting. And what they do is they give you medication to cause your, your body to react differently. Right. But all that is spirits. All of it is spirits. Right. It's really just stuff, invisible stuff that's interacting with us that's causing us to be that way. So sometimes what the Bible does, is it gives us a, a backgrounder. Right. It gives us what's happening in the, in the background that we can't see. So when Ahab is talking about, I want to go up to Raymond Gilead and all these prophets are just lying to him. Ahab don't know all these prophets are lying. The prophets don't even know they lying. All Ahab know is, man, it's 400 people telling me the same thing. If you got 400 people telling you one thing and one person telling you something that you don't want to hear, who you going to go with? You going to go with the one person? In real life, nine times out of ten, you going with the 400 people. That's the that's problem with most of us in the, in the world. Right. What happens is we go with the majority. You got the majority. Oh, they're the cool ones. Everybody's saying the same thing. I don't want to be the outcast. I don't want nobody to make fun of me. I don't want nobody to reject me. I want to be accepted. It's hard not being accepted. Or you know what? I'm going to do what everybody do. Right. That's the majority of individuals. It take a lot to be that individual. Be like, man, I don't care what everybody doing. I'm going to do it the right way. or I'm going to do it the way it's supposed to be done. I'm going to do it my way. That's tough. It's hard. So you got to imagine when Ahab is looking, not only do he think it's a good thing for him to go to Ramoth Gilead himself, but then he got 400 other people that he trusts coming to him saying, go on to Ramoth Gilead. The whole time, Micah had given us the, the background saying, listen, what's really happening is God is setting him up. And every single day in our life, we got those same types of choices that we got to make where we get set up, right? We get, we get put in a situation where it's like, yo, I'm going to make this choice. I'm going to do this. Oh, I think I can get away with this or whatever. And it's a setup for us. All it do is it's meant to set our life back. It's meant to show us that we, we not ready yet. We don't serve God. And if we die today, we going right to darn hell. And we got to put it in our minds that we got to be different and we can't accept nothing less. We can't accept nothing less. You just got to do it. All you're going to have in your brain is excuses. All you're going to have in the brain is why you can't do it and why it's not supposed to work out and why it's so hard and why I got to be like this and why this ain't fair. That's all that's going to be in your brain, right? All that is a lying spirit. Anything that separates you from the most high God and separate separates separate you from, from unrighteousness, I mean, from righteousness is a lying spirit. And we just got to put it in our mind to correct ourselves. Right. So that's what happened. We go. Um, uh, after that, you know, what I'm saying they smacked my man in the face, the prophet of the most high God, Micaiah. They smacked him in the face for, you know, what I'm saying for, you know, what I'm saying kind of embarrassing the king in that way. And then they sent him back on his way. So we kind of stopped about around that a little bit after that. 
And what we're going to do this week is we're going to do a little bit of a rewind and we're going to learn about the earlier life of Ahab. So let's go to 1 Kings chapter 17. So all right, go run back there and tell them boys to be quiet. Tell them go to 1 Kings chapter 17. Tell them if I got to talk to them again, they're coming in here and sitting down. Matter of fact, tell them come sit down right now. All y'all come sit down. Y'all don't get no more chance. We got to have the same conversation every week. DJ, tell all of them to come in here. This is the first Kings chapter 17. Give me verse one. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was one of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as Yahuwah God of Israel lives before whom I stand there shall not be dew nor rain these three years. Right. My bad. These years. But according to my word. Right. So this is a um, this is a, a prophet. His name is Elijah. Right. So Elijah the Tishbite came and he said he had a prophecy for Ahab. So remember, Ahab is the king of Israel. He's the king of the northern tribe. He had a prophecy for him, and he come, he was like, yo, it's not going to be any rain. It ain't even going to be moisture on the ground. When they say dew, it's talking about moisture on the grass and on the ground. He's like, it ain't going to be rain, not even moisture on the ground, except by my word. In other words, the most High God don't tell me to say it, it ain't going to rain. Watch this, keep going. And the word of the Lord came to him saying, Get thee from here, get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Kirith, mm -hmm. that is, before Jordan. And it shall be that you shall drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there, mm -hmm. feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of Yahuwah, for he went and dwelt by the brook Kirith, that is, before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, mm -hmm. and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of Yahuwah came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath. All right, so notice what happened. He went out to Ahab. He said, Ahab, yo, 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 it ain't going to be no rain. After that, the Most High God had him come and sit down. All right, he said, sit your butt down. Go sit down by, the, uh, by this river, All right, by this brook. So he hid. He's hidden from the king. Because you can imagine somebody come, a prophet comes, say, ain't going to be no rain. You the ruler. You got to take care of all the people. And now it's no rain. That's going to cause a famine. That's not a very pleasant thing. And if you look like you the one that caused it, king might want to kill you. So the Most High God had him hide in a river. Right? So Elijah did what the Most High God said. But since it was no rain, guess what happened to the river? It dried up. Right? So when the river dried up, Most High God going to send them somewhere else. Let's see what else which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. So now Zidon, you got to understand where Zidon is. Zidon, let me, let me pull it up here. <coughs> so this is, this is Zidon up here. All right here, let me make it so y'all can see. You know what I'm saying? This is it up here. All right, so way up north. So at first, y'all can't see y'all can't see the pen, the little red light. Get up, get up. Yeah, so it's right here, All right? So the uh, um, what's his name? Elijah. He's coming from way down here, all the way up here, All right? That's where he had to hide from. So at first, he hiding by the Jordan River. Then he come all the way up here to side. It don't tell us exactly, but yeah, most likely. Most likely he had to foot it. Let's see. Keep going. <laughs> so he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks. gathering the Who sticks. knows what a widow is? What's a widow? That's right. So if a woman, had, if, if a woman was married and her husband died, She's called a widow. So that's what she was. This is a widow woman. So it ain't no, you know what I'm saying? She don't have her husband around. But watch this. Keep going. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Mm -hmm. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand, in mm -hmm. thy hand. 
And she said, as the Lord thy God lives, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. Mm -hmm. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Mm -hmm. And Elijah said unto her, fear not, go and do as, you, as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me. And after make for thee and for thy, thy son. All right. So now you got to understand the gravity of this situation. This is a widow woman. She has a son. A widow woman in our old country is generally poor because her husband is not there to take care of her. So like the other people in the community got to take care of her. So she kind of she kind of end up getting like hand me downs or anything that's extra from the people. They give her some money or give her some bread or whatever to make sure she's taken care of. So she don't really have a whole lot of her own. So the first thing the prophet do is he walk up to her and like, yo, 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 go ahead and uh, bring me a little bit of bread. Just casually, just talking to her like, you know what I'm saying? Yo, just bring me some bread. Bring me a little bit of water. Go ahead, fetch me some water first. Bring me a little bit of bread. And so the lady looking like, look, let me tell you something. I ain't even got no real bread. I ain't got no cakes. You know what I'm saying? Really what I got is a little bit of meal. So I can, I can whip something together. I'm about to go get two sticks to go mix something up and make something. And it's really only enough for me and my son is what she's trying to tell her. Right? This prophet who she just met, it's just a man to her. She said, I'm going to eat it, and then we're going to die, basically. In other words, I don't have nothing else after this. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is the last of what we got. After I eat this, I don't know what's coming next. We're going to mess around and die. Right? So she let them know, this is all I got. She don't know the prophet. She don't know Elijah. She just met this man. So you got to imagine, the next thing this man say is, oh, no, I hear what you're saying. Right? He ain't, even, he ain't even paying attention. Look, I hear what you're saying. Go do everything you just said, except, you know what I'm saying? You know how you, gonna, you said you're going to take the two sticks and you're going to mix it up, you know what I'm saying? Fix y'all something. Okay, I, I get it. I want you to go ahead and do that. But make mine first. Then after that, then make it for you and your son. Nine times out of ten, how is a mom going to respond to that? You got a random man telling you, make, I ain't got enough for uh, sir. I only have enough for me and my kids. Man, tell you, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Go make it. Fear make it not. For me. <laughs> Don't be afraid. And make it for your son. Don't even worry about it. Nine times out of ten? Well, you got me messed up. I ain't giving you my kids. To, I'm trying to feed my kids. Would your mama do it? Would your mama do it? There's no mama. That's true. That's true. Would your mama do it? Now, you know your mama ain't going to do other things. <laughs> Never. You know what I'm saying? Never. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's the, it generally, that's not going to work. Right? Generally, that thing is out of the picture. But watch what happens here. For thus says Yahuwah God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that Yahuwah sends rain upon the earth. Right? So now he give her a prophecy. He says, listen, go ahead and do it. And here's why. Yahuwah said, you ain't going to run out of nothing. So now she's put in a tough spot. She put in a position to say, I don't know where my next meal is coming from. And I got to share with this man. And he say, if I do it that way, I won't have to, I won't lack for nothing. Right. The meal will keep coming. Or I can go with my original plan and just feed me and my son. And at least we know we got this meal and we got to see what happens with the next one. Right. Let's see what she chooses to do. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of Yahuwah, which he spake by Elijah. Mm -hmm. Eli, uh, go get Zahar. Tell him I said things. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, what have I to do with you? O, you may, o thou man of God, art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom. Right. So you have to understand what she was saying. So everything was going good. The food was coming in because of the prophecy that came through Elijah. So that was that was a done deal. She made the right choice. She followed it. Now they, you know what I'm saying, they good. They got food. So then her son falls sick. 
And the woman immediately, when she see her son is about to die from her sick, from the sickness, immediately she like, oh, God must be judging me for my sins. I didn't sin in my past. I didn't did some things I wasn't supposed to do. And now my son is sick. I got this prophet here and this prophet must be the reason. Right. If it ain't this, this if, if it ain't this, if the prophet ain't the reason, then why is this happening right now? Is how she looking at it. This prophet just made sure that me and my family can eat for the foreseeable future. Right. Everything is rocking there. Then all of a sudden now my son is about to die. So now with his her son about to die, she's assuming, oh, it's because of my sin. And this prophet is coming and he's you and God is judging me through this prophet. And now my son's about to die. So now Elijah said, no, no, no. Give me your son. Let's see what happened. And he said unto her, give me thy son. Hold on, boy. What's going on? Okay, but well, wait. And he said unto her, give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up, up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto Yahuwah and said, O Yahuwah, my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son? Mm -hmm. And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto Yahuwah and said, Yahuwah, my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. Mm -hmm. And Yahuwah heard the voice of Elijah. He said, let this child's what? Soul come into him again. What's the difference between soul and spirit? Soul is you, your consciousness, who you are, your 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 person that's right right the spirit is the energy it's the thing that animates you you know what i'm saying it's the thing that kind of gets you you know what i'm saying when when adam when adam was uh with adam was when adam was made in into uh, made from the ground the most high god breathed into him spirit right and that made him alive but after that he became a living soul Right. So the spirit gave life to the soul. But the soul is the actual life. Right. So when you die, your soul, your soul is in your blood. Right. Your blood. Most High God said man can't eat the blood because the soul is in the blood. Right. It say it's translated as life. But what it's saying is that the soul is in the blood. Right. So that soul spills into the ground that's why you see in revelation and everything you even see in in genesis when abel dies you know what i'm saying his 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 soul was crying out to the most high god from the ground right through his blood right so now then the spirit the spirit returns to god after a person dies mm -hmm. so now what he's saying here is return his soul to his body all right keep going watch this And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the soul of the child came into him again and he revived. Mm -hmm. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. Mm -hmm. And Elijah said, see, thy son liveth. And the woman said unto Elijah, now by this I know that you are a man of God and that the word of Yahuwah is in your mouth is true. The word of Yahuwah in your mouth is true. All right. So now you have to understand this. This woman is inside it. This is not an Israelite woman, right? She's a foreigner. She don't deal with our people. You know what I'm saying? It's likely that she don't deal with Yahuwah. She probably worship Baal, all that stuff, right? You got this random prophet that come along. She happened to trust what he's talking about. Then after that, she's starting to learn about God. She's looking like, you man of God. Did you come here to judge my sin? So you can assume that like, he probably teaching her along the way. Like, man, all this stuff you've been doing is foolishness. This, that, and the other, da, da, da. So now she looks, she's learning that she's been sinning. And now she's looking, oh, so you come here, you help me out, you teach me all this stuff, and now you judging my sin, now my, my son about to die. The prophet get freaked out. He looking like, no, nah, that ain't what I was trying to do. He's like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Let me, uh, let, me, let me see your son. You know what I'm saying? Go up there. He start praying, but you notice the prayer that he say to God, like God, read it again. Look what look what he prayed to God, because he he don't understand either. He looks like, why would you make let this happen? We was doing all right. Watch this. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, 
Hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son? Right? He said, he looking at, God, are you doing that? You brought evil on her? The one that, the one you told me to come to? You going to kill her son, God? Right? Watch what happened. And he stretched himself upon the child three times and mm -hmm. cried unto the Lord, saying, O Lord, my God, I pray, I pray thee, let this child's soul come in to him again. Mm-hmm. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. Okay, keep going. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son lives. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. Right? And when he say the Lord, it's really saying Yahuwah. Right? So she's saying the word of Yahuwah. This is a separate God than what she would have been raised on. So she, what she's really saying is she looking like all this stuff I've been hearing about and believing foolishness. After what I seen from you, we got food out of nowhere and my baby was about to die and you revived him. He was dead and you revived him. Right? She said, listen, I'm convinced. Now I know you really a man of God. And now I know that the word of Yahuwah, man, that thing is law. That's the truth. Let's see. And it came to pass after many days that the word of Yahuwah came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared Yahuwah greatly, for it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of Yahuwah that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go unto the land, unto all fountains of water, and unto all brooks. Peradventure we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we lease not, that we lease not all the beasts. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. And Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. Mm -hmm. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face and said, Art thou, art thou that, my lord Elijah? So now let's understand what's happening. It's a lot of history that was just given to us. Right. So we were told that Ahab and his wife killed all the prophets. Ahab worshiped me all. Right. So he wasn't messing with the prophets of the most high God. So if you came out and you was like, in the name of Yahuwah, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z or X, Y, and Z is going to happen. Then you liable to die. So now it puts some things in context for you. Now that's why Elijah, as soon as he hop on the scene, he say, yo, Ahab, it ain't going to be no rain. Yahuwah said it ain't going to be no rain. And then immediately after that, what did Yahuwah tell him to do? Go hide. Go hide your butt. Because they will kill you. Right? It's giving us a little bit more to the story now. So that's why it's important for him to hide in the brook. Then after he hid in the brook, he had to go run all the way to Zion and he had to get out of the land. And he's out of the land for some years. Then the most high God come back this whole time. It's a famine because there ain't no rain. You can't grow your crops. So it's a famine. Then the most high God got told him, get up, go talk to Ahab. I'm going to make the rain come back. So now he go. But then he runs into Obadiah. Obadiah is somebody who fears the most high God, but he still serves Ahab. So he know most high God is real. Right. And he prefer to listen to the most high God. He but hid. he also worked for Ahab. He hid all of the prophets. He yeah. 50 of them. Yeah, he been trying to secretly help the prophets out. So then they split up. Ahab is like, I'm going to go this way. You're going to go this way. That way we can cover more ground. So Ahab split up from Obadiah. And Obadiah bumped into Elijah. As soon as he saw him, he looking like, oh, that's you? Let's see. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face, and said, Art thou that, my lord Elijah? And he answered him, I am. Go tell, your, go tell thy lord, behold, Elijah is here. And he said, What have I sinned, that you wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me? As the Lord God, as the Lord thy God lives, there is no nation or kingdom whether my lord has not seen, sent to seek thee. And when they said, He is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not. Mm -hmm. And now thou sayest, go tell my, thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. 
And it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the spirit of Yahuwah shall carry thee, whether I know not. And so, when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay thee. But I, thy servant, fear Yahuwah from my youth. Right? So Obadiah sitting there, listen, I know you want me to tell him that you here. But here's the problem. <laughs> you elusive. We can't catch up to you. We've been looking for you for years. So if I mess around and go tell him, yo, I found him. I found Elijah. He was over here. And then I bring all the people back over here and you not there. He going to kill me. Then he let him know very clearly, like, no, 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 don't get me wrong now. I fear Yahuwah from my youth. You know what I'm saying? I'm with you. I'm on your side. I'm just saying. I don't want to lose my life over some foolishness. <laughs> right? Let's see. Was it, was, it not, was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of Yahuwah? How I hid a hundred men of Yahuwah's prophets by 50 in a cave and fed them with bread and water? Mm -hmm. And now you say it's Go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, as Yahuwah of hosts live, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. Mm -hmm. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Right? So now Ahab is like, okay, are you here? Elijah is like, oh, look, on Yahuwah, I'm going to tell you, me and him, we're going to talk today. So Obadiah is like, all right, man, don't, don't, don't mess me up now. Right. And he went to go set up the meeting. Right. Now, Sister Pamela says she still, you know, what I'm saying? she she got some questions about the uh, about the spirit and the soul. So let's spend a little bit of time and let's talk about it for a, for, for a brief moment. Right. You got the soul. Think of the soul as being your thoughts, your personality, the part of you, the part of you that makes decisions in your consciousness. Right. Your consciousness, all those different words. You know what I'm saying? That's that's something that describes your soul. Right. The soul is the part, the essence of you. Right. That's why the most high God through Yahushua says, what what gaineth the man if he if he what is it? Shall uh, gain the world and lose his soul. Right. If you gain the whole world, but you lose your soul. So you lose yourself. You lose you. You, you lose when you lose your life. You use the lose the part of the life. That's you. Now, the spirit. There are many spirits. So, yes, your question was, uh, your question was, is the spirit that Yah gives us the same, in, uh, uh, the same as the spirits that he talked about with Ahab, right? So, this, there are many, many, many different types of spirits. But when we're talking about the spirit that's in us, that right, that, that the Most High God gave us, that's a spirit that's passed down from Adam, right? Adam breathed, I mean, the Most High God breathed into Adam and made him a living soul, right? But he breathed the spirit into him. So that spirit, Adam was just laying there dormant, right? Nothing was happening. He was dead. The Most High God breathed the spirit into him and the spirit energized his body to where he can move around. His heart started beating and all that, right? So think of the spirit as the energy. You know, you know how, you know how, you know how like your heart stopped beating and they put the uh the defibrillator, the defibrillator together, you know what I'm saying? Clear, boom, you know what I'm saying, hit you with it. Well, that's a shock. That's energy. Right? So that energy, boom, it shocks you and it gets your heart back beating. Right? But what is your heart pumping? Blood. Blood. In the book, if you look at the book, it says the soul is in the blood, right? Without blood getting to your brain, what would happen? You die. You can't make no decisions. You die, right? If you if you limit the amount of blood That's to your okay. brain, matter of fact, you start making okay. you stop making wise decisions. Yes, we are. Oh, you are beautiful, Mayala. Yeah. Can I have a kiss? Yeah. You are a beautiful baby girl. Okay, go tell Tasha. Thank you. So you look at it, and if you if you limit the amount of blood that goes to your head, you start feeling lightheaded, right? You start, yeah, I know they all sleep, huh? You start feeling lightheaded. You start being able to make decisions. You kind of lose it. That's your soul, right? So the soul, 
and the spirit are both necessary for life. One, if you don't have both of those, you don't have life. If you lose one, you don't have life, right? Once you die, the spirit goes back to God and then your soul spills into the ground or, you know what I'm saying? It just stays, it's just no longer animated. You can't do nothing with it, but that's still the essence of you, okay? Now to the other part of your question are the other spirits that exist. The most high God does, when the most high God sends those other spirits, it's for other reasons, Right. So it's many other spirits. Not all of them is negative. Some of them is positive. Some of them is negative. But those are like think of those as like the emotions. It's all energy, though. You know, how people be saying, oh, yeah, you know, what I'm saying don't mess up my vibes or, you know, what I'm saying I'm trying to go somewhere where it's good energy. What they talking about is real. Right. That's spirits, though. So you might have a spirit that makes you feel comfort. You might have a spirit that makes you feel sad. You might have a spirit that makes you feel safe. You might have a spirit that makes you feel smart, all these different things. But the way you feel, all the, all the confidence that you might feel, the lack of confidence, that the insecurity, all that, those are spirits. So the spirits are interacting with your physical body. You have the spirit that keeps you alive, keeps your body energized. But then you also have the spirits that interact with your physical body and, and energize different decisions you make. Right. You know, your adrenaline just be pumping. You know what I'm saying? You get real mad. And you ever, you know what I'm saying? You just don't even realize how mad you is. That's energy, right? Your body start getting hot, right? You start doing, that's all energy, right? So those are spirits that are interacting with you and energizing you towards a certain emotion, right? Even being sad is an energy, right? It may feel like, oh, I have zero energy when I'm sad, this, that, another, but that's not true. You have an energy that's focusing on something internally. Right. So all that is those are all spirits, right? Emotions and hormones and all that stuff that they talk about. That's their way of seeing the the physical effects of when they say when they talk about your hormones, that's their way of seeing the physical effects of spirits. Right. But all that stuff is spirits. It's just a bunch of different spirits. But when it comes to our lives, there's there's the spirit that comes from God that produces life. And then there's our soul that that is the essence of us. Right. And when those two separate, spirit goes back to the most high God and our soul stays in the ground. Right. Or it stays, you know, what I'm saying here until the most high God raises us up. And when he rebuild our bodies, he put our soul back into it and then we'll be raised up again for the second life. You know what I'm saying? And anybody who don't make it to that second life, you know, what I'm saying they're going to be raised up to the second death. All right. Let me know if you got some more questions. I'll try to pop over there and read them, Sister Pamela. Let's keep going. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubled Israel? Mm -hmm. And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of Yahuwah, right? thou so you, hast followed Baalim. Right? You remember, y'all remember his father? His father was Amri. So you remember what the book said? You had Jeroboam. Now after uh, Jeroboam, who'd you have? Nadab? Yeah. And after Nadab, you had Baasha. And after Baasha, you had uh maybe it was Nadab after Baasha. Let me see. Oh shit. Yeah, let me see. It might have been Nadab after Baasha. You know what I'm saying? No, it was Na oh Elah. Yeah, after Baasha, you had Elah, then you had Zimri and Tibni, and then you had Amra. And when it got to Amra, guess what the book said? He was worse. That boy was worse than all the rest of them. So now Elijah is looking like who you saying trouble Israel? I ain't trouble no darn Israel, but that's how Ahab see it. Ahab see it as, oh, everything was good. We was rocking. Everything was fine. Now, all of a sudden, you pop up talking about there wasn't be no rain. Now it's a famine. So Ahab is looking at him like, you doing some hocus pocus, and it's your fault, and I'm going to kill you for it. And Elijah looking at it like, no, 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 no. You have been disobedient to the Most High God. You running the Most High God's kingdom. And you're not doing it in a way that's representative of the Most High God. You're the one that's troubling Israel. And your father's house, Amri, who was slightly better than you and worse than everybody before him, he is the one who was troubling uh, Israel. Let's keep going. Now, therefore, send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel mm -hmm. and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat 
at Jezebel's table. Mm -hmm. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Mm -hmm. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, how long halt ye between two opinions? So now he gathered all the people, right? And he asked the people, hey, how long y'all going to sit here and have two opinions? In other words, how, how long y'all going to play the middle? Y'all, 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 y'all kind of acknowledge Baal and worship Baal. And at the same time, it's like, oh, yeah, we love Yahuwah. That sound familiar? Right? This is our life. The stuff that they talking about is our life. The only difference is we just ain't got no profit right now at this moment to stand up. But you got to understand before before Elijah came and did this, it was a lot of people living in that time in that land that didn't have a prophet because she killed them all. Jezebel killed all the prophets. Elijah ran off. So anybody who was living in that time and died before this day, they would have lived their entire life without seeing a prophet. Potentially. Right. So you have to kind of relate that back to us. Yeah. Right now we haven't seen no prophet. No prophet came and lined stuff up for us and told us that. But you got to understand that can't be our excuse for not making it. We can't look at it below. Well, yeah, if I had a prophet, I would. No, nah, you can't have that mindset. Because you got to understand that Yah Yahushua said very clearly to all to all the people of our, our land. He said, listen. Had the acts that I'm doing today been done in Nineveh, they would have repented in sackcloth and ashes. In other words, God knew what would have been needed to cause people to repent, and he chose not to do it. We can't, God is not going to tap down for us just because we feel like we deserve it, just because we feel like somebody else got that treatment. Remember what he said to, to Thomas. He said, blessed are those who believe but do not see. We got to put our mindset in. We got to do whatever we got to do with no excuses to get there. If we got that as our mindset, man, the most I got to move for us. He'll move for us. We just got to trust the man. Right? We can't worry about all these different things. Only thing we got to worry about is having peace in the fact that I'm going to obey me personally. I'm going to obey this man's word. That's it. Everything else going to have to fall together one way or another. But if anything get in the way of me obeying this man's word, then that thing got to go. It got to be cut. That's all it is for us. So when he's looking at Ahab, he's looking at Ahab like, listen, this man that made a mess of this land, he got y'all doing the most. So how long is y'all going to play both sides of this thing? How long is y'all going to serve Yahuwah and serve Baal? Don't make sense. Let's see what he said. If Yahuwah be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people, and the people answered him not a word. Mm -hmm. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of Yahuwah. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Mm -hmm. Let them therefore give us two bullets and let them choose one bullet for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under. Mm -hmm. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under and call ye on the name of your gods. And I will call on the name of Yahuwah. Right. So now you got to imagine how big this is of a scene. Right. What Elijah is. Huh? Old country in attendance. Yeah. He called everybody up. And he asked the people, he said, how long y'all going to sit in between? You know what I'm saying? How long y'all going to gonna halt between two opinions? Then he said, listen, we can settle this right now. I'm going to get a bullet, right? I'm going to get a cow. I'm going to set this bullock up, and that's going to be for y'all. Are y'all going to set this bullock up? Don't put no fire underneath it. Just put wood. Don't put no fire. Don't light nothing. Don't put no fire. And I'm going to do the same thing on my end. Y'all call on your guy and see if he can set fire to your bullock. I'm going to call on my guy and see if he set fire to my bullock. And so if you the people and you looking at this, you look like, all right, let's do it. Because for the people, they looking at it, this is a win-win. They might not believe either side. They're like, oh, it's just a thing to do. I don't really believe either one of these guys. So they looking like, okay, well, if this man can make fire come under this bullock, well, for sure, that'll prove it for us. Because they looking for a sign. They looking for something to believe in. Right? 
Let's see. Keep going. And the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Mm -hmm. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it first. For ye are many and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. Mm -hmm. And they took the bullock which was given them and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice nor any that answered. Mm -hmm. And they and they leapt upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked him and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is taking, either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is on a journey. Or peradventure he sleep, sleepeth. Right. He must be awakened. So now Elijah is mocking him because Elijah's sitting there and he's like, okay, y'all set y'all's up first. So they set it up and it was the morning, right? It was early in the morning and they start calling out and praying to Baal. So they worshiping this other God, praying to him. They asking him, set fire here, Baal, set fire here. And nothing's happening. So it started off in the morning and now it's about midday, it's noon. And Elijah looking like, well, maybe, uh, maybe he busy, maybe he talking. Right. Or maybe he went on a journey somewhere. He'll be right back. Oh, you know what I got? Maybe your God is asleep. So he's mocking them right now. He's looking like, where are they at? You know what I'm saying? Why he won't light the fire for y'all? This is one y'all serve, right? He can't light a fire for y'all. But watch what Elijah happened. And they cried loud and cut themselves after the manner with knives and lances. Mm -hmm. until the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass. When midday was passed and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening, evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded. Mm -hmm. And Elijah said unto all the people, come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. Mm -hmm. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Mm -hmm. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob. Mm -hmm. To whom the word of Yahuwah came saying, Israel shall be thy name. Mm hmm. And with the stones, he built an altar in the name of Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. And he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. Mm -hmm. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, fill four barrels with water mm -hmm. and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar. And he filled the trench also with water. Right. So now what he did is he rebuilt the altar that, that they had break, the altar of the most high God that had been broken down. Then after he rebuilt it, he took 12 rocks and split it aside. Then he dug like a little trench. In other words, he dug like a little circular hole around the altar. And he just started pouring water on the altar. Remember, the whole idea was for the altar to be set made of flame. So he's pouring the opposite. He pouring water on it and he fill up the trench. So it's water. It's a big old puddle of water cir circling the, tr um, the altar, right? Watch what he do next. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Yahuwah, God of Abraham, Isaac, and, I and of Israel, mm -hmm. let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Mm -hmm. Hear me, O Yahuwah. I have done what? All these things at thy word. This is what separate us. There's a lot of people, we read this and y'all misunderstand. And then y'all go out there and be like, okay, I'm going to go to this Christian church. And I'm going to ask the Christian church, when, how long y'all going to sit between two opinions? And then you're going to set up an altar outside of that church and be like, yeah, the most high God is going to send lightning and strike this altar. You know what I'm saying? And you set up your own altar, Christians, and see if Jesus do the same thing for y'all. Right? Then you're going to be like, okay, y'all couldn't make nothing happen? Because you know the Christian ain't going to be able to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Then you be like, okay, let me pray to God and see it. Then you're going to pray and ain't nothing going to happen to yours either. Because when you do it, you doing it of your own, like you doing it out of your own spirit. That's because something that you was energized to. That's something that you wanted to do. That's not Elijah. Elijah said, I did all this by who? At thy word. At thy words. In other words, when the most high God told him, that's when he did it. All this stuff that he's doing right now is what the most high God told him to do. It didn't, it's not something that he just conceived up, just overzealous for God. Like, let me prove that my God is real. I got an idea. No, the most high God said, this is what you're going to do. You're going to tell them this. You're going to tell them that. You're going to build an altar. 
You're going to set it up this way. That's why he got this very particular way of setting it up. That's why he got the 12 stones. That's why he cut the trench because the Most High God gave him those instructions. Right? Let's see. Keep going. Hear me, O Yahuwah. Hear me. That this people may know that you are Yahuwah God and that and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Mm -hmm. Then the fire of Yahuwah fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice. And what else it do? And the wood and the stones uh -huh. and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. So the, water, the fire was so hot, it burned up everything. Burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stone, everything. But then it also, it also uh, caused the water to evaporate. It licked it up is what the books say, but it caused the water to evaporate. Right. Keep going. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, Yahuwah, he is God. Uh huh. Yahuwah, he is the God. And Elijah said unto them, take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. All right. And Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So now this is God's get back. Right. Most high God said, OK, I'm going to get the people back on my side. So he showed the people that once the people saw that, now Elijah has the authority to be like, yeah, go get them other prophets. Every false prophet you see, y'all know what y'all God is about. I'm trying to tell you what the most high God is about. Now y'all know he real. He don't mess with these other prophets. That's our law, right? Go get these other prophets and kill them, right? So that's what they did. All the people came on their side because they saw proof. After they saw that proof, then they was willing to go work, right? Let's see, keep going. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up on the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And uh -huh. he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. Mm -hmm. And he said, go up, say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stopped thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezebel. And the hand of Yahuwah was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. And uh, Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Mm -hmm. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. That's in your chapter? Yeah. What chapter was that? 18. Mm, I'm 19 start. Yeah, he had told Jezebel all that Elijah done. Keep going. All right. And they have told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. All right. So remember, this Jezebel said, remember, she killed all the prophets of Yahuwah. So she like all these other prophets around. Her. Now, Yahuwah came back and killed her prophets. So let's see how she feel about this. How he slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, so let the gods do so to me and more also if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. She said, in other words, boy, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. And it's going to happen before tomorrow around this same time. All right, let's see. Keep going. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. Mm -hmm. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. Mm -hmm. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. Mm -hmm. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, arise and eat. And he looked and behold, there was a cake bacon bake bacon on the coals and a cruise of water at his head and he did eat and drink and laid him down again and the angel of yahuwah came again the second time and touched him and said arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee and he arose and did eat and drink and went into the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights into horeb the mount of god all right so he just traveling around so he left israel and he went way down south into into the desert near Egypt, into the wilderness. And that's where we came. We were at this same mountain when we left Egypt and escaped from Egypt, right? This is Mount Sinai or, or Mount Horeb, right? So that's a very, very long distance. 
40 days, 40 nights, he survived off of this food that the Most High God woke him up and gave him in the vision, right? Then he made to Mount Horeb, and what's up? what else happened? And he came there into a cave and lodged there, and behold, the word of Yahuwah came to him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? Mm -hmm. And he said, I have been very jealous for Yahuwah, God of hosts, for the children of Israel has forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, mm -hmm. and I, even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Right? So Elijah feel like, man, he, all the other prophets is killed. I'm the last one left, and they trying to kill me too. Let's see. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before, before Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. And behold, Yahuwah passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before Yahuwah. Right? What do you think Elijah is telling Yahuwah this for? What is, he, look, what is, Yahuwah, what is Elijah looking for? He's looking for justice. He's kind of mad. Like, man. He said, give me some help. Right? So the Most High God showed him something. He is like, oh, yeah, okay. He came in a strong wind, start ripping up the rocks, right? Then what happened after that? And breaking pieces of the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. Right, but it's say most high God wasn't in the wind. What else happened? And after the wind and earthquake, and after the wind and earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. Right, most high God wasn't in the earthquake, super strong, right? Tear some stuff up, but guess what? He ain't in the earthquake either, what else? And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a still small voice. Right? So then the fire happened. Fire, we know a fire is powerful, right? But he said he wasn't in the fire either, right? But after the fire, it was what? A still small voice. A still small voice. All these other things you would interpret as being strong and strength, and it tells you Yahuwah wasn't in it. But then you had this weak voice, this still small voice, right? And guess what? Watch this. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, why doest thou here, Elijah? Mm -hmm. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only am left and they seek my life to take it away. Right. So he repeated himself. Because guess what? His original, what he's really asking for is help, right? Most High God showed him three examples of something powerful and then said, I ain't in it. Then showed him a still, small voice. Elijah saw it, heard it, and was like, man, and then walked out the other way, wrapped himself up like, man, I got to find some other way to do this. So the Most High God started talking to him again, like, okay, so tell me, why are you here again? What's going on? And then Elijah repeated himself because he's still trying to get the same thing. And watch how the Most High God, I love, whenever you see the Most High God interact with somebody, I love how he responds. You'll see that he never addresses what the actual question is. He's always thinking ahead. Watch how he deal with this. And the Lord said unto him, go return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you comest, anoint Haz Hazael to be king over Syria. Mm-hmm. And Jehu, the son of Nimshai, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. Mm -hmm. And Elisha, the son of Shephat, of Abel Mehola, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. All right. So now what Most High God just really did is he set up all the replacements. All right. He set up a replacement for what country was that? Uh, Syria. All right. A replacement in Syria. He told him anoint a new king for Syria. He set up a replacement for Israel, and then Elisha is going to end up being a replacement for Elijah, right? So he set up three replacements, and all these people are going to play key, rule, key roles in the near future. Watch this. And it shall come to pass that him that escapes the sword of Hazael mm -hmm. shall Jehu slay. Mm -hmm. and, him that escapes, and him that escapes from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Mm -hmm. Yet... I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, mm -hmm. and every mount which has not kissed him. Mm -hmm. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shephat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. All right, so let's hold right there. We'll, we'll pick this up. What verse is that? 19. Verse 19. So we'll pick up the, from 19. He just told him, he gave him a commandment to do three things, right? Elijah don't know what he's doing. 
Only thing he know is anybody who don't make it past the new king of Syria is going to run into the new king of Israel. And anybody who don't make it past the, uh, who, anybody who make it past the new king of Israel going to have to deal with Elisha. Right? So now he's, no, he, he got to set up these three things. And that's what we're going to start off with next week. Any questions? All right, well, let's pray out.